now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, John Steed crouched behind the cabinet in Cosgrove's observatory as the sound and the brightness reached its peak. After the explosion, the darkness descended again and there was silence. Steed crawled out of hiding and rushed forward. The tailor's dummy in the swivel chair drooped over. Its face was a distorted mass of melted wax, all snowy white. It slowly collapsed onto the floor. The door burst open. Steed, Steed, did you see what I saw? Dr. Primble stood in the doorway. See what, Dr. Primble? That flash of light. It came from below. It came from the cemetery. They've arrived, Steed. The Vatusians have arrived. They've landed. They've taken over the cemetery. Come on! The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Goldwater Omo has really powerful cleaning action. Mrs. Senior discovered this. My husband wears overalls to work, and they come back very sort of greasy and dirty. My girl actually does them by hand in the tub, but she uses cold water, Oma, and they're fine, and they come up perfectly clean. They say once an Oma user, always an Oma user? I've stuck to cold water, Oma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. Cold Water Omo cleans best. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, half and half. That's on inside. White milky chocolate the way you like. All over the outside. We're Wall's Pink Pussycat uh -huh. Episode 6, the final episode in this story in which John Steed and Emma Peel clear up the mystery of an invasion from outer space and take their farewells. From Venus, with love. Practically all prominent members of the British Venusian Society had suffered an attack upon their lives. Most of the attacks had been successful and ended in hurried death. The latest one had failed, just as well, thought Steed, for it was clear that the intention was to have reduced him to the sickly, white-haired mess that now flopped on the observatory floor. Then, Dr. Primble had burst in with the news that there were odd things going on in the cemetery below. The Venusians had made an invasion. Oh, well, only one way to find out. Uh, better move carefully, Steed. I can't see why. The place is as quiet as a graveyard. There was a flashing light over the far side. I'll take this path. You go round the other way. We could surprise them. Well, nothing they could do would surprise me. All right, let's see what's on the far side. When Steed got to the far side, there was no sign of Primble. Or anyone else, for that matter. Hmm. Primble seems so sure of himself. Oh, there it comes again. Steve didn't wait. He dropped flat behind a large ornamental headstone. The sound built up, terminating with a blinding flash and an explosive sound. The head of the commemorative statue on the tomb toppled over and fell almost into Steve's lap. Well, sooner you than me. The light disappeared. Silence reigned. Steve waited. And then... Time I got out of here. Mm. 
But he who ducks and runs away can come back later. Steed did with Professor Horace Clark, a ministry expert. Professor Clark was tiny, brisk and efficient, and had arrived in a station wagon packed with equipment. He knelt with a trowel. Uh, Earth is too warm. Yes, it was even warmer a short while back. I should know. I was lying at the back of the headstone. Uh, hmm. This earth been carbonized. Well, I was almost singed myself. Huh? It's most odd, Steed. Most odd. Why, well, you'd need a temperature of at least 2,000 degrees to do this. <sighs> Wasn't the flamethrower. Nothing volatile. All I saw was a white light, just a flash of white light. Yeah. A flash of white light, eh? Yes. Seemed to be attracted to the gravestones. Many of them have suffered, as you can see. What about Dr. Primble? He seems to be badly shocked. Yeah. He was found on the other side of the cemetery. He had a lucky escape, too, it seems. Swears he saw some kind of spacecraft. The light was mirrored in some way. Mirrored, eh? Oh, well, I've got all the sample I need. Only one thing now. I'd like to hear that tape you've got. The tape of the sound the light makes. So I've got a copy in my car. This way. In the offices of the British Venusian Society, Mrs. Peel was true to her word. She wasn't letting Venus Brown out of her sight. I just don't know how long it'll be before Mr. Crawford gets here, Mrs. Beale. Oh, that's all right. I can wait. I must say you lady reporters are persistent people. We have to be. Only way to get a story. Ah, Crawford. About time. What held you up? Ministry called. Primble's been attacked. He said it was by Venusians. That they'd landed and attacked him. Attacked? Yes. Steed, too. It'll interest you to know that Steed is from the authorities. What? Are you sure? Yes. So is this lady. Mrs. Peel. She's no reporter. She's Steed's partner. Oh, dear. Mrs. Peel made a quick step to the door. Crawford blocked the way. Not just yet, Mrs. Peel. I don't believe in this invasion any more than you do. Or the Venusians? That's a different matter. Come now. Do any of us know what's up there? On Venus or Mars or any of the planets? Discoveries always start as a guessing game. We may be right, we may be wrong. If you don't explore, you don't find out. What we shall one day, our funds are going fast. Your membership is dwindling rapidly. Now, if you'll excuse no. me. I came here to hear the tape you brought. Play it to me. I will. All you do is press this button. The enemy will still advance. Well, Mr. Crawford, recognize it? I certainly do, Mrs. Peel. I certainly do. While Crawford and Venus Brown were listening to Emma Peel's tape, John Steed was playing his copy to Professor Horace Clark. The enemy will still advance. And then... Oh, yeah. Well, any ideas? Oh, but of course. It's the sound of light amplification of stimulated emission of radiation. In words of two syllables. In words of two syllables, a laser beam. Yes, of course. Of a bleaching effect in boiled liquid. Plus a very distinctive sound. Now, where are they used? Ah, but of course. Got it. Bright boy, Steed. Back in the British Venusian offices, Mrs. Peel was getting warm, too. You say it's the sound of a laser beam, Mr. Crawford. No doubt about it. Where are they used? All over the place. In dentistry, communications, eye surgery. Eye surgery? Got it. Mrs. Peel made a dash for the door. It took Crawford and Venus totally by surprise. It was one of the quickest getaways Emma Peel had ever made. But she didn't try to escape. She headed for her car and made good time to the home and surgery of Dr. Primble. She made a forced entry through the garage and was doing quite well up the back stairs when... Oh, no, you don't. Oh, 
Mrs. Peel found herself grasped in two extremely strong arms. There was only one thing for it. If at first you don't succeed... Stay where you are, madam. Then don't move, unless you wish to have your head blown off. With an ordinary pistol? How unimaginative, Dr. Crimble. Martin, who is this woman? <clears throat> one we nearly got up at the farm. Friend of Siege, Mrs. Peel. I see. And what are you doing here, Mrs. Peel? I didn't come for an eye test, that I promise you. Does Steed know you're here? I call that a leading question, wouldn't you? Never mind, I shall find out. Martin, take this gun. Bring the lady into my surgery. Uh. This way, if you please. And a short while after that, Mrs. Peel found herself tied rather too securely to one of the sight testing panels in Primble's surgery. She looked around with interest, particularly at a large, portable piece of electronic equipment on a nearby table. The front section had a gun like muzzle. It was pointing straight at her. Yes, Mrs. Peel, a laser, but a somewhat advanced model. I'm sure you'd like to see it in action. But first, where is Steed? How much does he know? He's in the book. Why not ring him up and ask him? Martin, we've been hoping for a guinea pig. I think we've found one. Yes, I do. The beam upon her. That's it. Very good. Not from where I'm sitting. Splendid. A sense of humor. <laughs> you know, mine vanished when the Cuthbert Foundation began to divert its funds from medical research to the Society's Space Project. <laughs> yes, I couldn't beat them, so I joined them. And now, now, I've almost destroyed them. Using the Venusians as an alibi? An original one, you will admit. That's about all I'll admit. This model is remarkably accurate. It can drill holes in diamonds and cut through steel plates like butter. As for human tissue, <laughs> well, that's experiment. Or do you feel more cooperative? I feel positively stubborn. Your last chance, Mrs. Peel. You've seen what it does to people. Indeed. Oh, well, it's quicker than a peroxide rinse. You will see. I switch it on. Can't have that to know. Mrs. Peel's a natural brunette. Martin, see the gun! Naughty. Hey, Phil Steed. The later Steed. Swing it wrong. Right. Umbrellas are useful, you know. Dr. Primble ended up under the remains of his invention. After all the confusion had died down, Mrs. Peel, free at last, said... Pity about that laser beam. Primble could have made a fortune. The communications business? Mm, the laundry business. Think of all those spotless white shirts. Oh, to play havoc with my yellow spotted pajamas. Mm -hmm. Will you join me for dinner this evening, Mrs. Peel? Pleasure, Steve. I'm sending the bill to the British Venusian Society. When they get the bill, they're really going to see stars. You're lucky to have such a hard-working servant. <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't got a maid. Well, how on earth do you manage to keep your floors so clean and shiny? Ah, that's easy. I use Dual. Dual? Yes, Dual, the self-shining floor cleaner. It's so easy because Dual cleans and polishes in one go. How do you mean? Well, Dual lifts all the dirt out of the floor and dries to a bright, long-lasting shine all by itself. So when you use Dual, you don't have to worry about polishing. No, Dual cleans and polishes in one go. They say once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Here's Mrs. Senior of Mboggan Tweeny. I've stuck to cold water, Omo, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. There's no dirt or stains that can stand up to cold water Omo. The Avengers. <laughs> Mr. 
listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Coldwater Omo.